What's going on, guys? Welcome to another Drug Chug episode. And today we're going to talk about how beta blockers work, plus some pharmacology. So let's get right into it. So the way we're going to break down this video is first, we're going to talk about the different types of adrenergic receptors. Then we're going to go over agonists versus antagonists. Then we'll dive into beta-1 selective beta blockers, the non-selective beta blockers. Then we'll see who uses beta blockers. And then we'll talk about the beta blocker side effects that we see. And we'll go over a quick summary. And if you guys stay to the end, as always, we'll have a short quiz. So to first understand how beta blockers work, we need to talk about the different types of adrenergic receptors. And these receptors are located throughout various parts of our body. And the first one we'll talk about is our alpha-1 receptors. And these are predominantly located in our arteries. So when we have epinephrine or norepinephrine, which are just hormones that are produced in our adrenal glands, when we have these hormones attached to the alpha-1 receptor, it causes vasoconstriction and an increase in blood pressure. Now, when epinephrine and norepinephrine bind to our beta-1 receptors, well, again, we get an increase in blood pressure because it causes the heart to pump harder and faster. And we also have our beta-2 receptors, which are actually located on our lungs. And when epinephrine and norepinephrine bind to our beta-2 receptors, it actually relaxes and dilates our lungs so that we could breathe better. So one good way to remember this, guys, is that epinephrine and norepinephrine, they're also known as adrenaline. And whenever you have adrenaline pumping in your body, let's say you're running away from a lion. Well, it makes sense that it makes your blood vessels tighter and it makes your heart pump harder and it actually opens up your lungs so you could breathe better so that you run away from the line or whatever you're running away from. Now you're going to need to memorize where these receptors are located. So a good way to memorize this is alpha-1 receptors are located on your arteries. Beta-1 receptors are located on your heart because you only have one heart. And beta-2 receptors are located on your lungs because you have two lungs. And I do want to note that these receptors are also located in other areas too, uh, but predominantly alpha-1 receptors are on the arteries, predominantly beta-1 receptors are on the heart, and predominantly, again, beta-2 receptors are on your lungs. So let's quickly go over how agonists and antagonists work. So earlier we talked about how epinephrine and norepinephrine are agonists for our adrenergic receptors. So when epinephrine attaches to our beta-1 receptor on our heart, it's going to increase our heart rate and our contractility. Well, on the flip side, we have our antagonists. And in this case, we have the drug atenolol. And what atenolol does, it, it antagonizes the beta-1 receptor. So when atenolol is in our body, we actually lose contractility. We actually decrease our heart rate. And this is what's known as a beta blocker because we're blocking the beta receptor. All right, guys. So now let's get into the beta-1 selective beta blockers. So remember, beta-1 selective means that we're targeting the heart. So the first drug that we're talking about, and this was also in the example prior, was atenolol, or brand name Tenormin. We also have bisoprolol, brand name is Zabeta. And then we have two metoprolols. We have metoprolol tartrate, brand name Lopressor, and metoprolol succinate, or toprol XL. Now, a good way to memorize which is which is that metoprolol succinate lasts so long because it's the longer acting beta blocker. And metoprolol tartrate is just a shorter acting version. So if we look at the dosing, we can actually see that metoprolol tartrate is dosed twice a day, or BID. And then metoprolol succinate is dosed daily, or QD. 
Now, if there's one thing you guys are going to remember from this video, let it be this. That all beta blockers end in olol. So we have a tenolol, bisoprolol, metoprolol. So they all end in olol. Now, I do want to mention a special type of beta blocker, a unique one. And this is going to be a beta-1 selective beta blocker that actually also has vasodilation effects. And it's going to be Nebivalol, or brand name Bistolic. So because it ends in Olol, we know that it's going to block the beta-1 receptors on our heart. But what it also does is that it releases nitric oxide in our arteries, which actually cause vasodilation in our arteries. So if we slow down the heart and we increase our venous capacity, we actually decrease our blood pressure even further. And one cool thing to note is if you look at the brand name, bistolic, bi means two, and stolic, kind of like systolic blood pressure, means blood pressure. So it has two ways to lower blood pressure. So we went over the selective beta blockers. So now let's go over the ones that are non-selective or non-cardio selective. And remember, this just means that it doesn't have a preference to beta 1 or beta 2 receptors, meaning the heart or the lungs. So our first non-cardio selective beta blocker is a product called Natalol or Corgard. And then we also have a product called propanolol, instant release, or indorol, and a long-acting version of propanolol called propanolol LA or indorol LA. So remember, the non-cardioselective drugs block both the heart beta-1 receptors and the lung beta-2 receptors. And typically, we do not want to block the beta-2 receptors in the lungs. If we block the beta-2 receptors in the lungs, it causes difficulty breathing. Now, there is also some beta-blocking agents that are non-cardioselective plus their alpha blockers. So what does that mean? That means they'll block the heart, they'll block the lungs, and they'll block the arteries. So we will get a complete decrease in blood pressure because they do three things. So here we have a product called Carvedilol, which is brand name Coreg. This comes in a longer acting formulation called Carvedilol CR or Coreg CR. And we have Labetilol, which is Trandate. And again, these agents block the receptors on the heart, block the receptors on the lungs, and blocks the alpha receptors in our arteries. So it slows down the heart. It constricts our lungs and it dilates our arteries, which again decreases our blood pressure. So which patients should use beta blockers? Well, first off, we know that beta blockers decrease blood pressure. So it would make sense that if a patient has high blood pressure, they would use a beta blocker. Another patient who may have angina pectoris, which is this pain in your chest area, uh, would benefit from a beta blocker because it would relax the heart and stop the pain from occurring. A patient that might have atrial fibrillation will also benefit from a beta blocker because atrial fibrillation means that the heart's atria is overactive and relaxing it would also net a benefit. And patients that have had heart attacks can actually be on beta blockers to help with the post heart attack care and to decrease mortality in these patients. Now I do want to mention patients that have heart failure, which means that their heart isn't pumping out enough blood, can also benefit from beta blockers, but there's only three beta blockers that can be used in heart failure patients. And these beta blockers are going to be Carvedilol, Bisoprolol, and Metoprolol succinate the long-acting version of metoprolol, only these three. And one interesting indication is actually for migraine headaches, and propranolol can be used as like a prophylaxis to help with any headaches. So let's go over some of the beta blocker side effects that our patients may run into. 
So by far the first one might be hypotension, which makes sense because these agents lower our blood pressure and our heart rate. So they might experience lightheadedness, they might be dizzy, uh, they might have orthostatic hypotension, which means once they stand up quickly, they might start feeling dizzy. So it'd be a good idea to let them know that they should start standing up slowly. And uh, another side effect that is seen is being fatigued or tired. But the good part is that these beta blockers uh, eventually grow out of being fatigued and tired all the time. So our next side effect would be actually bronchospasm. So remember, the non-selective beta blockers might actually block our beta-2 receptors, which are on our lungs, and we do not want that typically. And when we block the beta-2 by accident, it causes shortness of breath, wheezing, uh, very difficult breathing patterns, so we don't want to give this to patients who have asthma or COPD or any other breathing issues. Another side effect to watch out for is for our diabetic patients. And beta blockers can actually block the hypoglycemic effects. So it can actually mask if their blood sugar is too low. So it'll stop them from trembling or, sh or, or showing effects that they need more sugar in their blood, which could be very dangerous for them. Now, I do want to mention <clears throat> that there are black box warnings for beta blockers. And the biggest thing to remember is you do not want to stop a beta blocker abruptly. And this is on the black box warning. And the reason is, is that our body gets so used to the beta blocker that once you suddenly stop taking it, you'll have that risk of a rebound tachycardia, which means fast heartbeat, and hypertension because your body's so used to it and all of a sudden you don't have the beta blocker anymore that you get all these rebound effects. So let's have a quick recap of all the drugs that we talked about. So we know we have our beta-1 selective agents. This is going to be our tenolol, which is brand name Tenormin. Bisoprolol, which is brand name Zabeta, our metoprolol tartrate, which are our low presser, and our metoprolol succinate, which is our toprol XL. Remember, the succinate salt lasts so long, that's why it is the long-acting metoprolol. Then we talked about a special agent that was beta-1 selective and has vasodilatory effects. And this was nebivalol, or brand name bistolic, because it blocked our beta-1 receptor on our heart, and it released nitric oxide in our arteries. And then we talked about our non-cardioselective agents, so these didn't care if it went to beta-1 or beta-2. And these were our natalol, which is our brand name Corgard, our propanolol instant release, which is Indorol, and our propanolol long-acting, which is Indorol LA. And then we talked about our non-cardioselective plus alpha blocking activity. And here we had three agents. We had our carvedilol, which is our Coreg, our carvedilol CR, our long-acting carvedilol, which is Coreg CR, or controlled release, and then our labetilol, or our Trandate. All right, you guys made it to the end. So just like I promised, we're going to have our short quiz to see what we retained. So number one. Which of the following beta blockers can be used in patients with heart failure? Is it our metoprolol tartrate, or nebivalol, or carvedilol, or our tenolol? So question number two. Metoprolol is an adrenergic receptor antagonist at which receptor? Is it our alpha-1, our beta-1, or beta-2? Or is it our alpha-1 and beta-1 receptor? So question number three. The generic name for Toprol XL is, is it atenolol, metoprolol tartrate, nebivalol, metoprolol succinate? Question number four. Which of the following is true? Beta blockers can be started and stopped quickly. There is no risk of reflex tachycardia. All beta blockers can be used in heart failure patients. Non-selective beta blockers should not be used in patients with asthma.
All right. Thank you guys for watching. You guys made it to the end of the video. If you can, please check out some merch and support the channel. We get some awesome t-shirt designs all the time. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that like button so that we could reach out to other students that may need this help. And also think about becoming a Patreon supporter so that way we could pump out more quality videos faster. And also, the answers to the quiz are in the description below. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment. We'll get right to you. Until next time.